The Bible has been a political football at least since 300 AD. The canon of the Bible is the most critical factor in the belief system. The canon means the official list of books to be included in the Bible. Change the canon and you change your belief system. It's as simple as that. Immediately after the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, an attempt was made to fix the canon, but no universal agreement could be reached. The first attempt was made at Cheltenham in England, and it was, to a certain extent, successful. However, although the final construction of the canon could not be done, until the Council of Trent in the 16th century AD, some cataclysmic changes came about immediately as a result of the Council of Nicaea. No less than 20 Gospels were rejected. If you want to know about the 20 lost Gospels, please subscribe to Igor Frankenstein on YouTube. He is probably the world's leading expert on that topic. But the thing that struck me as most odd is the inclusion of Hebrews in the canon. Before the Council of Nicaea, Hebrews was generally rejected by the Church Fathers. It is by an unknown author, certainly not by St. Paul. Why was it given pride of place? It contains the very epitome of the belief system of the modern Catholic Church ever since the Nicene period as confirmed by the Council of Trent. Basically, it claims that the priestly hierarchy of the Catholic Church is in continuity with that of Judaism. It, therefore, is the manifesto of authoritarianism in religion. Many so-called conservative Christians can trace their conservative beliefs back to the 16th century. Others can trace back even to the 4th century. But I am more conservative than them. I trace my belief back to the time of Jesus himself. That is why I am a Gnostic Christian. I also follow the ideas of Origen, that great doctor of the church of the second century, who believed that Jesus was overshadowed by a disincarnate entity from the moment of his baptism. And Origen also believed in reincarnation. Now don't get don't confuse this overshadowing with possession. It is completely opposite to possession because there is full freedom, mutual freedom involved. I have no doubt that Jesus had several previous incarnations. In one of them, he was General Joshua who led the Israelites across the Jordan. He was the one who said, Others may do as they wish, but for my part, I will serve the living God. I go along with that too. In view of this historical background, I caution all people against treating the prophecies in the Bible like a railway timetable. There is no such certainty involved. The status of Jesus as a divine being also has to be qualified, as I will attempt to do in due course. One thing I can tell you, that Jesus is still with us on earth as he promised. I have seen him and spoken with him. That is partly why it is quite easy for me to believe that others have also seen him and spoken with him. If you want to find out what Jesus is teaching today, please subscribe 
to Glenda Green on YouTube. I am sure that she is in close contact with him. The issues involving exorcism cannot be addressed unless we reach a deeper understanding of the role of Jesus. How much is